the archive represents our organization's memory, which stretches back to 1795, when we were first established by King George III, and in some instances, stretches back even further to 1620, reflecting Royal Naval surveying activity across the globe. Because of Britain's interest in charting the globe, we have about 750,000 aerial photographs and an estimated 300,000 printed charts and 150,000 hand-drawn hydrographic surveys. And supporting those, we have hundreds and hundreds of minute books and letter books, thousands of reports. We have 8,000 individual remark books. We've got records of all of the different activities, and that's one of our important remits, that we do show how things have changed over the years and make sure things are recorded in their proper context. And when you look at that collectively, it makes a wonderful story of British Admiralty charting and surveying. So the archive is best known for its Admiralty charts and the surveys from all over the globe. But we also have a whole range of other types of record. We have copper plates, some of which date from the 18th century. We also have enamel plates, glass plates, and we have all types of records that support the production of charts. The list is almost endless. So one of the ways we're making our historical records available is by an active program of digitization. And so far we've captured about 60,000 images. And this includes famous surveys by Captain Cook of Newfoundland, and Shackleton's great work on the endurance. And we have some very nice surveys by Worsley recording all of his observations in the Arctic. There are many documents of great global historic interest. We are very fortunate that these have survived. One of which is the Charles Darwin connection with HMS Beagle and the Beagle's voyage to South America. It was Fitzroy who commanded the Beagle that took Charles Darwin and it was Fitzroy who later founded the modern meteorological service as we know it today. People who use our archive, it's not just academics, but it's also people researching family history, or they are researching local history. And there's a, a lot of information here that supports lots of other themes as well. People can access the archive by looking at our website and our catalogue. And there are details there of how to make an appointment, 